And joining us now to discuss, Zach Schoenfeld, reporter at TheHill.com. Did I get your last name right? I hope so. Yes, you did. All right, Zach, I appreciate it. Uh, talk us through some of the biggest cases remaining, starting with Trump's criminal immunity. What are you tracking there? Yeah, this is the big case that will determine whether former President Trump has criminal immunity from prosecution for official acts while he was in the White House. Donald Trump, if he pulls out a win here, he says that would command the dismissal not only of his charges in D.C., where this appeal originated, but also his two other criminal cases that have not yet gone to trial. So the stakes are big there on the merits, but the other thing that we're tracking is the timing of all of this. Uh, there had been requests from special counsel Jack Smith's office to move this case along quickly. Obviously, here we are now at the very end of the Supreme Court's term. We still don't have this decision, and the time is simply ticking until November's election. So even if Donald Trump loses his immunity appeal, it's still unclear if any of his criminal cases will be able to go to trial before yes. November. The timing is very interesting. And, and I know the high court also said to weigh in on the Capitol riots on June 6th, and in particular whether obstruction charges brought against hundreds who stormed the nation's capital should be upheld. What is your take on this one? Yeah, Natasha, this is another case that could impact uh, both former President Trump's criminal case in D.C., as well as you were mentioning, more than 300 uh, January 6th defendants who have been charged uh, under this statute. This is an obstruction charge. Uh, it was originally put into federal law uh, after the Enron scandal and was originally intended uh, to crack down on white-collar crime. So the question before the Supreme Court here is whether the Justice Department was proper uh, in bringing these charges now against more than 300 January 6th rioters. Uh, so if they rule for the defendants, it could not only mean that some of Donald Trump's charges get dismissed, but a lot of those January 6th defendants who are either awaiting trial or in jail could see their cases completely change. And we saw the big ruling on bump stocks uh, being overturned on Friday. What other gun decision are you tracking on the horizon? Yeah, this bump stock ruling Friday was the first of two big gun cases at the Supreme Court this term. Though they're both about guns, legally speaking, they're very different. So this case about bump stocks was one that was really a question of whether the executive branch had overstepped its authority and whether Congress had actually given them permission uh, to, to regulate bump stocks. And the answer, according to the Supreme Court, was no. This other case is whether a law that Congress has passed, a law that's on the books that makes it a crime to possess a gun if you are under a domestic violence restraining order, they are weighing whether that's actually constitutional. This is a case that's being not only watched for the future of that provision, but also what it could mean for the many of other gun laws that are going through the courts right now in the wake of the Supreme Court's recent Second Amendment expansion. Okay, and, and meanwhile, there are also multiple social media cases. What's the big takeaway? Yeah, these are cases where the Supreme Court is really diving in uh, to social media and how far the government can go in attempting to regulate these platforms. Some of these cases, uh, there's two different cases, both one coming out of Texas, the other one coming out of Florida. These goals by uh, GOP state legislatures and governors to attempt to force uh, platforms uh, to, to adjust their content moderation policies. So the question here goes uh, whether those, uh, whether the governments here, these two states, whether that is violating these platforms' First Amendment rights. So this is big implications uh, for the future of social media and how far the government can go before uh, tramp trampling on their First Amendment rights. Okay, Zach, I want to get a gut check from you uh, on the Mifepristone and the bump stock decision so far. Did either give momentum to either Democrats or Republicans as they are vying for voters ahead of November? Yeah, you know, I think on Mifepristone, you know, if it went the other way, it certainly would have given Democrats a lot of ammo already that they have going after the Supreme Court for overturning Roe versus Wade two years ago. I think Democrats right now are expressing a lot of relief at this uh, decision on Mifepristone preserving access. Uh, this was a decision that didn't actually get into the merits of the safety of the drug, but instead was whether these plaintiffs were actually able to walk in the courthouse door in the first place, whether they had legal standing. Uh, so I think Democrats are feeling a lot of relief that the Supreme Court does not seem willing to let these challengers into the door uh, and, and question the safe safety of this drug. So a lot of relief, I think, right now. Okay, appreciate it. Zach Schoenfelder with TheHill.com. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.